Now, one of the reasons why I am a little bit sensitive about these kind of hysterical claims, oh, someone was doxxed, is because I've seen how this works before. And I just want to show you an example where I was accused of doxxing widely over the most preposterous, uh, on the most preposterous ground. So as some of you not, might know, this woman, Molly Young Fast, is a frequent pundit on MSNBC and CNN. And her name is Molly Young because her mother was Erica Young, or is Erica Young, who was a very famous novelist, wrote The Fear of Flying in the early 1970s, and uh, other books like that, was a very wealthy and uh, uh, famous woman. And her husband, her Molly Young uh, fast father, was also very wealthy. She grew up extremely wealthy in Manhattan. And she went on MSNBC and started ranting and raving about Elon Musk and others. And in the course of doing shows, she started ranting about rich white men. She's like, rich white men are the problem. Rich white men are this. Rich white men are that. And I couldn't believe when I heard that because she's an extremely rich white woman who grew up in the lack of white luxury in Manhattan. And so in response to that video, I posted the following on Twitter, quote, rich white woman, Molly Young Fast, who won the birth lottery by being born to rich, famous white parents who raised her in Manhattan, sent her to private schools, and thus herself bought an Upper East Side uh, co-op for $5 million in, in 2007 at the age of 29, rants about, quote, rich white men. And then I posted the video. And as part of that, I had posted a article from a real estate uh, newspaper that's online that anyone can find. It's completely public. And I posted a segment, an excerpt of that article. Here you see it. It's from, uh, it, it was from, it was a, it was a 2007 article. I posted on May, May 2nd, and it was from the New York Observer, which is a well-known paper in New York City. And the headline was, Sold, Schlumpy Molly Young Fast Drops $5 Million for a Ritzy, ritzy Eastside Co-op, Calls Her New Neighbors, Quote, Plankton. So this is a publicly available document that reported on Molly Young Fast's purchase of a $5 million co-op back in 2007 at the age of 29 using her family wealth. And the part of the article that I posted simply said, quote, the 29-year-old novelist Molly Young Fast completely, entirely, totally adores the Upper East Side. Ms. Young Fast, the only child of Erica Young, who wrote this sexed up 1973 feminist gem Fear of Flying, paid $4.9 million last month, cited record show, for a four-bedroom co-op overlooking Madison Avenue. I posted that because of the absurdity of this woman, of all people, going on MSNBC and ranting and raving about the evils of rich white men. And one of the people who replied to this tweet was Elon Musk. Now, it turns out that this article, from which I took this excerpt, very long, that low down in the article, contains the address of the co-op, the building of the co-op that she purchased. I didn't even publish that part of the article. And even if I had, it's a publicly available article. And all these liberals, particularly liberal feminists, these kind of types, Molly Young Fast, started claiming that I had misogynistically doxxed her and that Elon Musk helped promote this doxing by promoting my tweet, by responding to it with a meme. And I got accused of doxing because I posted an article from 16 years earlier about Molly Young Fast's purchase of a co-op co in Manhattan that I got from an article that was written about it that's still online. And it was such a big kind of scandal that it made all sorts of media outlets. Here you see from Newsweek in May of 2022, it was that same day, Elon Musk is under fire for retaliatory, quote, doxing of a journalist. Quote, Musk was accused of supporting the practice of doxing Monday after weighing in on a Glenn Greenwald Twitter thread, criticizing the Atlantic writer Molly Young Fast for calling the billionaire's complaints about woke censorship an example of, quote, old rich white men being upset with, quote, young people during an MSNBC interview. After Greenwald shared an article about Young Fast purchasing a $5 million condo in New York City's wealthy Upper West, uh, East Side, Musk shared a, spot, sponge, a, spon, a, a SpongeBob SquarePants, quote, Mrs. Krabs mean. While the neighborhood has over 200,000 residents and the article shared by Greenwald did not include an explicit address as of Monday evening, Although some Twitter users suggested the address was removed after Greenwald shared the article, that's a total lie, the soon-to-be Twitter owner was slammed 
for the alleged doxing of Molly Young Fast. And again, the article itself had the address in it, but not her apartment number, just the address of where this building was from 15 years earlier. And so the idea that this was doxing was preposterous, given that I had just simply cited a publicly available article that was online published in a major newspaper. And as I said, you can, with almost as much ease, find where J.D. Vance was. I don't know if we have the... So let me just show you two videos that pretty much, and these are on major, uh, one is from a major Fox affiliate in, in Northern Virginia. The other is from a very large real estate channel on YouTube that talk about J.D. Vance's various real estate holdings. Here first is the Fox News affiliate reporting on J.D. Vance's uh, residence in this one particular part of Arlington, Virginia. Let's play that. Those opinions and stuff, sure. That's what America's about, is just having opinions and being able to have your differences and not shoot people or get into fights. Vance is reported to have purchased this home through an LLC for more than $1.5 million after he was elected to the U.S. Senate. Today, there's an Alexandria police officer stationed across the street from the Vance home. I'm not excited, but I'm not upset either. I mean. So they went to the exact neighborhood where it was. They said the exact neighborhood it is. They showed the front of J.D. Vance's house in Arlington, Virginia. They showed the houses that are across the street from it, and it would be very easy to obviously find that house if you really want to look for it. Here is a very large and established YouTube channel about real estate holdings that was about J.D. Vance's home in Ohio. And again, I'm just showing you this to show you how widespread and widely available and easily obtainable this is. Let's look at this. It's a JD located in Ohio. In 2018, Vance and his wife Usha, a lawyer from San Diego who resigned from her position at Munger Tolls and Olson following her husband's VP nomination, purchased a pre-Civil War home in Cincinnati for nearly $1.4 million. Built in 1858, the 6,405-square-foot home features five bedrooms and four and a half bathrooms. Situated on about 2.3 acres in East Walnut Hills, it's located in a mostly liberal neighborhood. Other features of Vance's Victorian era home include a carriage house, a park. Okay, and it goes on and on about all the features in this house. Now, it, it says the street on which this house is located. It shows pictures of it. And by no means are these the only ones. You can find these all over the place because in general, real estate transactions are public. The When, when people buy and sell big homes, it's often subject to newspaper articles. So I want to be very clear, I would not personally have published anyone's home address. I think it's journalistically irresponsible or at least careless. And I made that view very clear. I think that should have been redacted. I would have redacted it before publishing it, but it's also not what it's being made out to be, some sort of attempt to put J.D. Vance and his family in danger, because anyone who wants to know where he lives, everyone knows where Donald Trump lives, could very easily find it. So I think in some way this is a little bit much to do about nothing, this specific incident, in the sense that what really just happened here was that Ask was basically saying, we don't, want to use, we don't want you to use our platform to link to a document that contains someone's home address. And basically emphasized that he had been temporarily suspended, although I think one of the notes Ken Klippenstein got suggested he was, at least for now, permanently suspended. But it seems clear that if he were to upload the document and redact that information, X would allow him back on. The reason why I wanted to deconstruct that in part is because there's so much misinformation about it. A bunch of liberals who love Twitter and Facebook censoring of the New York Post article all up in arms about this political censorship as though J.D. Vance punished and silenced a journalist for publishing damaging information about a Republican vice presidential candidate. Meanwhile, a bunch of conservatives accusing Ken Klippenstein of having deliberately put J.D. Vance's life in danger. All of this is way histrionic. But I do think there's a lot of extremely important issues buried in this and are surrounding it about what role the media has now assigned itself when it comes to documents about the ability of big tech to continue to police our discourse and what their responsibilities might be and just in general how information can either be allowed to flow or be impeded on the internet. I do think Ken Klippenstein should be allowed back on Acts, especially if he re-uploads that document. I don't believe he was trying to put J.D. Vance's life in danger. My guess is it was just a careless oversight, even if it were something more than that. 
as we just shown you, it doesn't actually provide information that isn't otherwise readily available, but I do think it raises a lot of questions about why this document wasn't previously pub published, what led up to that. And a lot of that, as usual, reflects poorly on our media. Thanks for watching this clip from System Update, our live show that airs every Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on Rumble. You can catch the full nightly shows live or view the backlog of episodes for free on our Rumble page. You can also find full episodes the morning after they air across all major podcasting platforms, including Spotify and Apple. All the information you need is linked below. We hope to see you there.